born to have been lain from his mother's womb indicates a congenial, uh, congenial condition rather than a tragic accident, born from birth. And we have to be careful with, with disabilities and people that are lame or people in certain conditions and situations. A lot of times we want to say it's because of something they've they done. You remember um, uh, the, the man that was blind from birth, they asked Jesus, who committed the sin? He or uh, the mother or the father. And we, even today, when we see people in certain conditions, we want to say that, that, that God did that to them or something they've done that caused God to, to, to respond in that manner. Uh, Sister Bond, I'm pretty sure you, you have children. You love your children, so you're not going to do anything to cause harm or danger or hurt to your child. Now, if, if we love our children as much, then God loves us even more. So why would God do anything to, to his children to cause hurt, harm, or danger? Now, he might allow things to happen, but he's not the adversary. Satan is the adversary in our lives that causes us harm, hurt, and danger. The tornadoes and all of this stuff, of course, it's tied to global warming. I'm a tree hugger. I'm an environmentalist. But God allows things to happen in our lives for a reason, so that he could get the praise, the glory, and the honor. Y'all with me this morning? Oh, I'm kicking on all cylinders. My, my voice kind of rash, but hold me, Holy Ghost. Let, let's get, let's go to get on into the lesson. Although his physical condition was terrible, he did have two things going for him. First, he had family members or friends who, who were willing to carry him to the temple daily. Second, he had a prime high traffic place that seems to be recognized as his right. The exact opposite seems to be the case with the man uh, in John 5 and 7 at the particular gate um, called the beautiful is unusually understood, is usually understood to have been on the eastern side uh, of the temple. Now here, we, the, the stage is set, the setting, um, the daily situation. Now comes his expe expectation. He expected to receive alms, a benevolent offering, daily. So he was positioned in the right position, at the right time, and who comes along? John and Peter. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ash and on. The book of Acts sets a, a co co collision course. Two men going into the temple hear beggar's request. This man confronted everyone who entered by the gate just by his presence alone. Peter and John may, may have seen him before. The Greek, Greek word translated arms occurs uh, 13 times in the New Testament. It refers to a daily driven monetary gift to the poor and needy. Jesus never, con uh, never renounced the practice of giving to the poor but he did condemn those who made a show of their giving, uh, made a show, a show of their giving uh, to garner praise and honor. See, we have to be careful, uh, Sister Collins, how we, how we give our, our money. And we have to be real careful because when, 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 when God, see, the word says he, when, you, when, you, when you sow in secret, you know, you were so abundantly. Everybody, everybody would see uh, how God is. You don't have to brag. You, you know, I, I, I've come out of churches. Me and get up. I'm gonna give a thousand dollars a day. You know, it's, but then what happened with the Pharisees and the widows? Might what did Jesus say? They were complaining about. It. You see, she only gave a mite, and Jesus said she gave more than you because she gave from the heart. 
So she gave all she had. So that's why we had about our giving. Yeah. Peter and John had no doubt giving to beggars many times, both in Jerusalem and in their hometown. Uh, give it a mic. Uh, I, I knew you were going to be first. Come on, talk to me. Also, uh, talking about how his family had carried him to that same place day after day after day, and that shows, you know, uh, that he had um, consistency. And when I drive up and down Watson Boulevard now, there are so many people <coughs> out there who are begging, and you see the same people moving from maybe over in front of Walmart, then the next day you'll see them in front of Lowe's, and then the next day you might see them further down, the same people over and over. You know, there's no consistency in their life. There's no faith that nobody, anybody's going to give them anything because they're moving from space to space. And, you know, if you want God to bless you, sometimes you got to be still and stay in the same place, and no matter how long it takes, your blessing is going to come. Uh, thank you uh, for your comment, uh, Sister Mead. Uh, hopefully and prayerfully, uh, these situations in Warner Robins will change. Uh, the city um, just purchased a building, uh, which I own, and they're going to house the homeless and, and, and feed individuals. So rather than being on that corner, uh, they should be going to the shelter uh, receiving things that they need and opportunity that the city will provide to them and for them to, to get them to another level. Yeah. Now, some people are professional beggars. Yes. Hustlers. Hustlers. <laughs> yes. They are professional beggars. Mm -hmm. And you have to use your, your sense of discernment. Mm -hmm. yeah. your discern God gives us a discerning spirit mm -hmm. to see the hustler. Mm -hmm. and, and, and my money is for the needy and not the greedy. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a problem, uh, uh, Brother Stanford, saying no. Matter of fact, uh, Sister uh, Barnes, I get in the mirror sometimes to practice saying no. <laughs> I know I'm being silly. But that's just the point of it. You have professional beggars. And this man, his routine, as you said, Sister Need, his family took him to the, to the temple every day, and he had a perfect, he was in a perfect position to be. And the people would come by and give them a few coins. Bless him. Bless him. Every day. Mm -hmm. Now, it will come, hold me, Holy Ghost. It will have to come to mind, all right, these daily blessings that you are receiving, what are you doing with those blessings? Mm -hmm. Because if you can't walk, maybe he's contributing to his well-being at home. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe he's contributing uh, to the family. Yes. Well, hold me, don't do it, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> You want me to go and do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of these folk living in our home, we need to take them down on the corner, I guess. Because they're not contributing to anything to the household. We need to figure them a way to hold it. So, yeah. now, you told me not. I told myself not to do it, but sister <laughs> me, you said go and do it. That's all right. <laughs> Put a little in this thing. Then now we, we transition into undivided attention. Mm -hmm. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, with, Jan, with John, said, look upon us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. When he said, look at us. And his mind said, oh, he getting ready to bless me. When they getting ready to bless me with some chichin. <laughs> Peter no longer the wishy-washy denier from Jesus' trial, spoke to the man with confidence. What Peter said first is interesting to compare with the previous verse, Acts 3 and 3. That verse indicates that the beggar had already, uh, already, had already seen the two apostles when Peter said, look on us. Therefore, the request by Peter uh, wasn't for the man to do something entirely different but for him to do something more intensely. The extra intensity undoubtedly resulted in making eye contact. In any case, the two apostles gained 
the full attention of the man. Fourth right admission. Then Peter said, silver and gold, I have none. For unexplained reasons, neither Peter nor John had any coins. Peter expressed this in terms of precious metal coins, silver and gold. But we, but we are given the impression that they did not have any copper coins either. Not even a tiny brass uh, lepton, as a widow might. To, to shirk one's duty to care for the needy by not giving alms violated at least the spirit of the law which required the people of Israel to care for those who were in need. Others observed this uh, busy gate would have seen the apostles' uh, failure to give them alms as being shamefully unprepared. The wonder invoked the name. But such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That could beat out any amount of money they would have had on that person. He told him to rise up and walk. This is not the end of the story, though for Peter did in, in, indeed have something precious to give this poor man, healing in the powerful name of Jesus of Nazareth. Peter did not present himself as having miraculous power. If the man were to rise up and walk, the power would come from his Lord. Some have suggested that the man might not have wanted to be healed. They speculate that he would deliver daily to prime spots for begging, perhaps more lucrative gig than we might guess. This is to understand the anguish of those with disabilities. Some do indeed rise above the, the limitations of their disability, but many with a disability would like to have it removed. It is important to acknowledge the unique story of the people with disability and not assume a uh, uni uni universal applicable narrative. Yeah. 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 Part B. Man cured. Cured man. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankles received strength. That's one thing about God that I've seen in my life. See, see, see McCray, I, I can't testify for you because I don't know your story. Sister, uh, Sister Mead, and Sister Barnes, and Sister Collins. I don't know your story. But what I do know is my story. Mm -hmm. And the only way that I'm going to know your story is for you to tell me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes individuals say, well, I don't want anybody in my business. Mm -hmm. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. Because it very well might be somebody in your same situation that needs some encouragement to know God brought me through it. And he will bring you through it as well. So we ought to share our blessings and how God has brought us up. Planting our feet on solid ground. We ought to share that. Because we never know who needs to hear that story. Might be a little girl or a little boy. 
that's going through a situation that just needs some encouragement. Just need a pat on the, on the back, say, honey, it's going to be all right. Because God immediately moved in this lame man situation. And he will do the same in our, that, that's in our lives. And we also have to remember, too, that not all disabilities are not physical disabilities. You know, you look at somebody and, well, they look fine. You know, like people standing in line at the grocery store. You know, they have special lines for people with disabilities. Why is he in that line? You don't see a cane. You don't see a wheelchair. You don't see crutches. Why are you in that line? You know, there's nothing wrong with you, but there's a lot of disabilities that are not physical. And they're not seen. You're right. Not seen. So what you just said, Sister Nee, is one, one, one philosophy I have in, in life. Mind your own business. <laughs> you need to mind your own business. Yeah, yeah. We got too many opinions mm -hmm. to share. Something y'all just keep to yourself. Yeah, yeah. And then, then other folk won't know there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Sometimes just, just be quiet. <laughs> folk, call, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you make that comment, mm -hmm. immediately I say something wrong with you. Uh -huh. yeah. you I, I just identified you as, mm -hmm. okay, back to the lesson. You got a disability too. <laughs> For mine and other folks' business. I'm serious about that. We, I have compassion on those, and, and, and you, you don't ever know in today's society, in today's society, you have people with disabilities, uh, mental illnesses, that we just don't know. We don't know. So the best thing for us to do is to try to encourage and be constructive rather than destructive. Yeah. Because little do we know, mm -hmm. with the flip of a switch, we could be in that That's same right. situation. That's right. We could be wheelchair bound. Mm -hmm. And you never know, uh, Brother McCray, who will have to bring you a glass of water. Yeah. Yeah. I treat everybody with respect that wants respect, and even then, I treat you with respect. Mm -hmm. But back to the lame man. Mm -hmm. Remember, this man had been disabled from birth. Thus, his disability was not from disease or injury. He was not being healed or restored, technically speaking, since he had been made whole for the first time in his life. For the first time in his life, Amen. he was made whole. The detail of the man being lifted by the right hands lends the sense of an eyewitness testimony. We further note Right hand can indicate honor as a left hand indicates dishonor. I don't know that I dis that I agree with that, that you're gonna put on and dishonor because I'm left handed. <laughs> I'm left handed. They say left handed folks are smart. Mm -hmm. But when you say dishonor, I, I, I cannot agree with the writer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that that that's his understanding. I won't say interpretation, but his understanding of the word. So don't don't left-handed folks out there, don't 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 feel that you're dishonored because you're left-handed. The book of Acts uh, presents this miracle not as providing uh, providing missing body parts, but as fully empowering the man's feet and ankle bones. The focal point is of his disability, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Now here's a very interesting point. Do we see here in the scripture that he's praising Peter and John? No, he's praising God. 
Because, see, Peter laid the foundation when he said, I heal you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's the power that I have. Come on, Brother Sway. You got something to say? Yeah, the other thing about this miracle is this man was lame from birth, from so birth. he didn't know how to walk. But he jumped up walking. He jumped up walking. <laughs> hold me, hold it, go. I have a, a co-worker who a daughter a little, about, a little over a year old, and she's just now learning how to walk. You know, and I, I tell her all the time, now, once she start walking, it's going to be something to deal with. Amen. <laughs> But this man, thank you, Brother, brother, brother Craig, he got up walking. Mm -hmm. He didn't need anybody to teach him how to walk. Mm -hmm. He got up, got up walking. walking, not only, not only walking, but leaping, mm -hmm. yeah. leaping for joy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excited. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing to take into account. He didn't go on to the house, did he? He went right into that temple mm -hmm. with them, mm -hmm. walking, leaping with joy. I'm going to show y'all fellas <laughs> what these fellas did for me in the name of God. In Jesus' name. Right. He was happy. Yes, he, was. he was happy. And as I said earlier, on these uh, game shows, I see people jumping up and leaping like frogs and, and rabbits. <laughs> but you won't leap for Jesus. Mm -hmm. That'll preach right there, leaping for Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's something to think about. Yeah. You know, and I, I tell, like I told you, I tell, tell uh, Trent, uh, don't, don't worry about the congregation. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you get your praise on if you got, have to get your praise on all by yourself. Yeah. Because we all worship mm -hmm. in a different manner. Right. Mm -hmm. So just because they're not jumping up and down, it don't mean they're not hearing what you say. Mm -hmm. Or feeling what you say. Mm -hmm. I try to be a little conservative, a little reserved in my worship. Mm -hmm. But y'all don't want to see the Holy Ghost get a hold of Randy. Because <laughs> I'll turn it out. Because God's been good to me. Mm -hmm. Hear what I'm saying? You need to walk with me and talk with me sometimes mm -hmm. for me to tell you how good he's been to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, I've been homeless mm -hmm. and jobless. Mm -hmm. And when you're in that situation, folk don't want to have anything to do with you. Amen. Huh? Mm -hmm. Didn't know where my next meal was going to come from. Mm -hmm. But oh, look at me now. Yeah. How God has blessed me. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he blessed me. And it's not, you're right, it's not a matter of bragging. It's just a matter of how good God had been good to me. Come on, Sister Mead, you got something? Yeah, I mean, I just want to say, when that Holy Ghost hits, when Trent is singing, and if that Holy Ghost hits me, I'm going to get up and do what God propels me to do. They I'm tell just, me I'm, it's just like fire. It's just like fire. Shut up in your bones. And if somebody else in the congregation want to get up, but you got to do your own thing. You don't worry about what nobody else is doing in their praise and worship. You come to, I come to praise God, come to praise his name. And whether you praise him or not, that's up to you. The song says, mm -hmm. I don't know what you come here to do. Mm -hmm. Huh? But I came to praise the Lord. I come to praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. For what he's done for us all, all week long. Got us at this point. Amen. And some of us are too stout hearted. Yes. Hold me, Holy Ghost. I ain't going to preach. Some of us are too stout hearted yes. to say, Lord, I thank you mm -hmm. for my journey. Yes. You brought me for such a mighty long way. Yes. And, 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 and Pastor Armstrong, when, 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 when Lindsay Pina Peer pointed at you last Sunday and, 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 and shouted out about cancer, I said, me too. Me too. Cancer is not a death sentence. Amen. You can walk away from it. You can live with it or die with it. And I'm five years out, working on my sixth year. Amen. I was 200 and, I'm going to tell my story. I was 207 pounds. I was a big fellow. Mm -hmm. That nasal pharyngeal cancer locked me down to 145. Mm -hmm. Skin and bone. But I said, Lord, whatever it is in this that you want to show me, I'm going to wait on you. 
I'm going to wait on you. Yes, yes. Look at me now. I'm standing still. I got some side effects from that chemo and radiation. Mm -hmm. But it's a whole lot better than what it could have been. Stage four. Amen. And you think I ain't going to praise him? <laughs> you think I'm going to allow you to hold me from, from praising God? Mm -hmm. If you don't, I, I can praise him all by myself. Amen. I don't need your help. See, sometimes folks want to look around and see who's looking to see whether or not they want to praise him. But brother, thank you. Hold my mute. You know, and we need to stop that because we know nobody knows our story better than we know our own story, and we ought to tell somebody how good God has been to us. Not that we're bragging, but let you know what God can do. What God did for me, He would do it for you. And we need to know that. We need to know that, that God can make a difference in our lives if we trust him and believe in him. Yes. Hold me, Holy Ghost. Right. Toddlers take months to learn to walk as well as even longer how to hop about. Adults have uh, suffered traumatic injuries to the spine or legs can testify to the challenges to the challenge of learning how to walk again. With this man on that day at the temple of psychomotor controls in his brain instantly knew how to make his legs work. Not only could he walk he could jump, which is an advanced stage of using the legs and, and ankles. Leaping was not, a sta was not stage two for him, whether it was the first thing he did. Amen. The man's newfound physical abilities were accompanied by a sign of spiritual health. As he was walking and leaping, the man praised God. This would be appropriate 100% for such times as a miracle happening. But surprisingly, it did not. This is something to, 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 to process and to understand. His motor skills taught him how to immediately walk leap and jump. But see, it was what's on the inside of his head that caused him to praise God. To praise God. And it's amazing to me how we know. But I'm strong. We, we've allowed society to make us feel as if there's something wrong with us. For praising him. Watch sometime how in these restaurants when you stop and pray. Mm -hmm. But I love it when I get a waitress or a waiter. Mm -hmm. That when I'm praying over my food. They will pause and wait. Amen. For you to co complete your prayer. Yes. Yes. It's something to think about. I watch everything going on around me. So when I see that. They, they get a bigger tip. Because if we're connected, that you know to respect. That's why it's important to know, Sister Barnes, when you are reading the scripture, there shouldn't be any movement. I'm, I'm, I'm straying away from the lesson. When you're reading the scripture, if you, know, if you notice, I'm reading that scripture, and there's movement in this church, I immediately stop. I stop. And we need to teach our people. Certain things, you, when you don't move, when you don't talk, and even when you're praying, when you're, praying you're still. Yeah. But this man, after he had gotten here, he jumped with joy. Mm -hmm. He wanted the world to know yeah. just how good God had been to him that day. Yeah. Yeah. 
They had been giving him fish every day. Now they done taught him how to fish. <laughs> now he knows what it's all about. Amen. And he expressed himself. That's why when God blesses us, we ought to let the world know. And then, I don't mean hating on my neighbor when God bless my neighbor. Why? Because God might still be in the neighborhood. <laughs> and it's my turn next. Amen. But now watch where the Watch where the story takes us. Amazed crowd, verse 9 and 10. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat at arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at which had happened unto him. I'm somewhat conflicted with this particular passage of scripture because I, I, I only thought that most of the people in the region had heard about Jesus and known Peter and John. So if Jesus was able to do it, Peter just pronounced it in the name of Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth, why would they have been amazed? Undoubtedly, there were some doubtful people in, that, in, in the temple that day that knew of Jesus, but didn't know him. Y'all got something to say about knowing of God, but not knowing him? Okay, since nobody, nobody got anything to say, I'm going to say it. A lot of people know of Jesus, but they don't know him. Don't have a relationship with him. Have not tried him. They tried everything on their own. But have not tried Jesus for themselves. And I've tried him. And I can testify to the moon turning red. I was in Walmart the other day talking to another preacher. And I had to tell this man, bro, I got to go. We've been standing here for a whole hour. And I can stay here till dark talking about Jesus. Huh? I'm not ashamed of it. And we ought not be, we ought to be leaping for joy. You know what? If we don't leap for joy for anything else, we ought to leap for joy that he died on that old river cross. For your sins and my sins. Not because of what we've done. Not because you all attend the Sunday school every Sunday. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> but because of his grace and his mercy and his love for his children. He died. And that's enough within itself to make you all to want to jump and leap for joy. And say, Lord, I thank you for my journey. For what? You brought me from such a mighty long way. That's a testimony with all by itself. This man, now jumping about and happily praising God was instantly recognized by those who frequent the temple courts. It is likely that he had only one set of clothes, hold me, Holy Ghost, and one head covering. They had seen him many times, a beggar who had occupied a place at the beautiful gate for years. They had seen him so often and for so long that there was no doubt in their minds that he truly had been disabled and was now doing physical things that defied his disability. God will bless you to the point where folk won't recognize you. Amen. But they recognize him because he had been there for many years. And they knew it was the old beggar that they saw every day because the word of God says his family brought him there every day. Every day. So they knew him. But now they see him in a whole different light. He jumped and leaping for joy. This caused wonder and amazement for them. 
This could only have been the work of who? God. It wasn't the work of Peter and John. It was the work of God. And we, we thank God that he gave God the honor and the glory. Lord, I thank you. How many years you did on Armstrong? On base, how many years you did? Okay, I'm working on 41. Yeah, 41 would be in September. But it's by the grace of God that I've been able to stay out there on that base all these years. Amen. Sister Ford, was it easy? Oh, no, it was not easy. Did I want to give up? But you know what I did? Every time they did something crazy to me, I'm going to tell my dad to own you. <laughs> I took him to the Lord. Yes. And that's what I do now. I'm going to tell you, my, when I was a little fella growing up, Holy Holy Ghost, I know I'm getting off the lesson, but it's all right. I got a few more minutes. When I was a little fella, I was, I was devilish just a fool. I threw a rock at a fella and run. I hit you with a rock, and I run straight for my brother. Cause I, I get behind my brother called John didn't play by Randy. So as I grew older, I realized I can tell my dad to own you. Because he can do a whole lot more than John can. And that's what we ought to be. We ought to pray about that. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't take matters in your own hand. Pray about it. Yeah. Verse 11, and as the lame man which uh, was healed, held, he, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's Great Wonder. Let's go ahead and wrap it up now. My time running out. All the people who witnessed this miracle congregated in an area of the temple known as Solomon's Porsche, a porch. This was a covered open air area in the east side of the largest temple courtyard, the court of the Gentiles. If the beautiful gate was, was on the outer wall, then those entering the gate would turn left to access this area. Solomon's porch is estimated to have been about 50 feet wide and maybe 100 and 150 feet long, with a wooden porch perched on marble columns that were 30 to 40 feet tall. The book of Acts presents this as a place where the Jerusalem church met at times. There is some debate about what kind of access those with disabilities would have had uh, to the court temple. Some debate on those with disabilities, how they would come in. And, and I'm going I'm to end right there um, in saying this. What makes you jump for joy? What makes you jump for joy? Is it, is it your beautiful daughter? That's, that's what makes you jump for joy? Huh? Is it having three dollars in your pocket? Is that what makes you jump for joy? No, what I'm jumping for joy is that God spared my life to roll on for just a little while long. I might not be where you are in society if I have what you have. But that that I have, I'm going to thank God for it. And I'm going to praise God. I told you last week, I thank God I don't have a helicopter. Because I get beside myself. Fly all over the place looking down at folk. We don't, that, that's not God. No, we ought to be jumping for joy that he gave us another opportunity on this side. I don't know what tomorrow, because tomorrow isn't promised. But I'm going to praise him today. While the blood is running warm in my veins. For all the, not, I ain't, I'm not, I'm, I'm praising him, Armstrong, for you as a brother that I love, as a brother. But I'm praising him for what he's done for me. Amen. That's right. He's done a whole lot for us. I was talking to a guy the other day at the traffic light, and he complimented me on the, on the car I was driving. Yeah. And I said, thank you. I said, but it was a time in our lives where we weren't allowed to drive these type automobiles. 
there was a time in our lives where we were not allowed to live in certain neighborhoods. Yeah. But look at God. Look at God. I done chopped cotton, picked up pecans, pecans, which is when you're in November, December. Picked peaches, it's this time of year. I hear they, they, they lost 90% of the peaches this year. I've done all of that, cut trees, peach trees. Now I'm sitting behind a desk speaking out orders. You think my God isn't good? Huh? Yeah. God is good to us. And we ought to recognize it, not only recognize it, but we ought to tell somebody about the goodness of God and how he has blessed us in our lives. We ought to be jumping for joy right now. Huh? Thank you, Lord. That's all. Thank you, Lord. That's it. That's all he wanted to hear. 